Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Real Estate Investing. And uh, today's uh, topic, we're going to talk about if there are no if there are no stress sellers in the housing market, there will be no housing crash. Uh, good morning. Welcome once again. This is Si Wing Yi from the Yi Real Estate Network. And once again, my special guest host is Julie. How are you, Julie? Fine. Thank you, Steve Wing. How are you doing today? Fine. Thank you. Uh, for yeah. The, you know, yeah. For those of you that if you have not uh, watched our videos before, Julie is a frequent guest of mine, and she's a typical uh, real estate investor. Uh, you can make the argument that she is a newbie, although she has a very late start in her real estate journey. However, she, she started three years ago, two and a half, three years ago, and... Boy, she really ramped it up. <laughs> real, real quickly, she has scaled up six turnkey rental properties in Buffalo, New York, one of our turnkey providers. And the rest is history. Her, she goes through the journey. So she's the reason why I invited her because she's putting herself in your shoes. Those people out there, if you are new to me, try to enter the real estate investing uh, marketplace, or even if you are an uh, experienced investor who are Oh, we have a lot of challenges in your in your portfolio, or you perhaps you bought one or two properties already, rental properties, and you're stuck. Don't know where to where to go. You're paralyzed with fear, whatever. Mm -hmm. Experienced investor and you can learn something from this uh, particular podcast. So Julie, she's uh, she's learning just like everyone else, and uh, it's a long term journey. It's a very fun journey, Julie. Absolutely, yeah. I think the thing I would just stress. It is a long-term journey, so I would encourage your either your current investors or ones that haven't even gotten in, gotten their feet wet. It's a long-term journey, so don't get out too soon. Exactly. Very good. So without further ado, let me go ahead and share the screen. And uh, again, the title is No Distressed Sellers Equals No Housing Crash. So let's go through the three or four slides that we have then. When our slides, when my quick presentation is over, we could uh, brainstorm for a few more minutes. And just to uh, let you guys out there get yourself educated and informed about this particular unique housing market that we are facing. So uh, in terms of distress home sales out there, per the uh, Mortgage Bankers Association, as you can see, they are... Almost the, the distress sales out there is almost non existent, as you can see the chart. Back in the housing crash, back in 08, 09, yes, there were a lot of distressed homes, but today's housing market is completely different than what has occurred in the housing crash. There are very, very few distressed homeowners out there, and we're going to tell you why. So, again, if there are no distressed homes or very little. The distressed homes, there are very little inventory of homes to sell. And even though the demand has decreased dramatically as a result of the high mortgage interest rate, however, the demand still exceeds supply. So economics 101, yeah. if demand exceeds supply, then it will put upward pressures on home prices. And that's why we have seen uh, this year, 2023, we have seen pretty much last year, 2022 as well, in spite of the, all the negative headlines, boom, boom, housing crash, bros, just giving inaccurate information and the world is coming to an end and the world is melting. None of that has happened. Right. The housing market is very resilient and we continue to be resilient as, as long as the housing inventory is very severely lacking on a historical basis. And another chart I want to share with you based on the Autos research chart right here, stating that for this year, there are only around half a million homes available for sale at any given moment. Hmm. Uh, if you look at the, the last six years of the of, of this chart, hmm. the normal housing supply market is up in the upwards of 1 million homes wow. we at half a million. So we're all 50% below what we need to be in terms of mm -hmm. home supply of inventory. You have any right. on that, Julie? 
<laughs> no, no, it's, it just makes sense. Like you said, it's basic economics, supply and demand, supply and love, demand is high. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As you can see right here, the next few slides will validate what I just said. Half a million homes for sale. Mm-hmm. U.S. population of a whopping 339 million people. <laughs> it's only half a million homes for sale, which is mind boggling on a historical mm-hmm. basis. Mm-hmm. This chart, this number is just mind boggling. In case you have not heard, 25% of homeowners have a mortgage rate at or below 3%. Furthermore, 65% of current homeowners have a mortgage at or below 4%. Mm -hmm. 90% of homeowners have a mortgage at or below 5%. One more thing that a lot of people may not know. Wow. Out of all the homeowners in the U.S., almost half of the homeowners have no mortgage at all. Mm. So tell me, people, where are you going to find the distress? No. We have a lock in effect. No homeowners in their right mind that have a 3 to 4% mortgage rate going to move up to buy a new home. Right. For- at seven and a half to eight percent, right? Uh, essentially, increasing the mortgage payment by double, more than double, which is <laughs> again mind-boggling. This chart, a lot of people don't know about it either. Back at uh, twelve years ago, <clears throat> the median price of a home is a mere two hundred twenty-four thousand. Wow! Giving the mortgage rate back then, twenty eleven. I don't know exactly the mortgage rate back then. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe five percent. I don't know. Uh, I'm just guessing. But the uh, monthly mortgage payment uh, back in 2011 is $1,019. Okay, keep that in mind. Of course, then as the uh, the years go by beyond uh, 2011, then we uh, fast forward into Mm -hmm. 2021 when the mortgage rate has historically decreased to a um, mortgage rate low, 3 to 4% for most people. And when people uh, refinance their homes or when people bought their homes back in 2021 and with a low historical rate, the average mor- mortgage payment, principal and interest, does not include taxes or insurance. Right. Average a mere $1,000. But however, look at here. The median price of homes has drastically increased from two twenty four to uh, what's the number here? Can you see three hundred ninety seven thousand. Yeah, from two twenty four to three hundred ninety seven thousand, and yet the payment is even less eighteen dollars less in twenty twenty one from twenty. Well, that's amazing. Yeah, so the people that that no that were able to refinance their mortgage and people that bought their home back in 2021, they are locked in their mortgage for life and the mortgage payment very low. Mm-hmm. So they are good to go for the next 28 years or, or, or less. Correct. Uh, and then when you're asking yourself, again, if, if there are very few homes for sale and right. the demand is still pretty high, like I said, economics 101. Exactly. exactly. Continue to increase. And so you ignore all the housing mm-hmm. cars, porn, crash brothers out there, and just uh, all the negative headlines, clickbait to YouTube videos, try right. to distort the uh, American public. They do a poor job at it because even, okay, let's look at the worst case scenario. Worst case scenario for if a, if a particular homeowner have some kind of crisis in their lives. Mm-hmm. It's not like they could all, uh, they have a lot of, they have a lot of options. It's mm-hmm. not like back in you know, the housing crash back in 2008, very different housing market conditions. Right. So here are the four options a homeowners can, can pursue if they are going through a stressful situation, which is uh, very few people under stress right now because the job market is still very, hot, very good. The unemployment rate is still at a historical rate, believe it or not. Right. So people have jobs and they have right. jobs, they can still make their low mortgage payment. And so there are four options available if under the worst case scenario, people can rent out their home. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I actually 
the cost of home ownership when those people have a low mortgage, right? The mortgage is lower than cost of renting. Right. <laughs> very good. Right. That's, that's a very good point. Yeah. Yeah. So why would somebody sell their house and go out there and rent, pay a higher rent than their current mortgage? Exactly. Because the rental market is at a Julie, you and I discussed this already on the previous video mm -hmm. because the, the home affordability crisis at a full 40 year low, the more renters than ever in history yes. of America right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, the rental market very strong. So, you know, homeowners are just uh, stressed. They can rent out their house. Very true. On, on a, or they can rent out a room, they can rent out two rooms in the house, or they can rent out the entire house. Right. Um, more often than not, they're. The, the rent they're charging as a landlord to a renter will more than offset their cost of their mortgage, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a very good point. Yeah. And mm -hmm. secondly, yeah, secondly, <laughs> uh, the, uh, they can, if they lo lose their job, right. Okay, uh, they don't have to sell because the unemployment insurance, I know unemployment insurance could be like six months or whatever. Right. But the unemployment insurance is, Probably more than thousand dollars per mm -hmm. month. That's true. So collecting an employment check itself, more often than not, can can maintain you know, the mortgage payment, right? Uh, on a medium, I know California is different. California is have the highest home prices in the country and a few right. other places, but we're just talking about the national average. Absolutely. Yeah, so right. yeah, the relief is available on this uh, first two scenario, and third, of course. Uh, there are more jobs than there are available workers uh, that want them. Hey, don't be lazy. You can become an Uber driver. Or <laughs> mm, that's true. Yeah. That's a, I know a lot of people that are doing that right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah, and do, there's only there's a side hustle. You can do so yes. many side hustles out there mm -hmm. that can you can allow to pay your mortgage in, in case you lose your job, right? right? Uh, because with the advent of the remote work environment that we are mm -hmm. normal that we have seen since the pandemic uh, a lot of people have more than one full-time job working remotely in fact julie i don't know about you but some of the people i know mm -hmm. that, that they have two full-time jobs working remotely working right. online right and they're making tons of money yes, uh, yes there's so many things you can do online now that we didn't have privy two years ago but yeah it's, there's just dozens and dozens of ways to make extra money. And then even the worst case scenario, you could sell the house, like you say, on number four and, and have a ton of equity, especially if you, have a, if you have a very low mortgage. Yeah. The people that sell their house right now, I know the, uh, the inventory is very low. There's so mm -hmm. few houses out there. The people who are selling have a reason to sell they, because maybe they have a job relocation. To another part of the country, mm -hmm. or they they have a little bit of stress in this situation, or or they want to sell the house and they have so much equity in the house and move to Florida yeah. or Texas yeah. and uh, pay all cash, <laughs> pay all cash for the next house to retire or vacation homes. Yes, some people will sell because uh, due to various factors, but uh, sure. downsizing some, even yeah, yeah. exactly downsizing. downsizing. Yeah, that's a great way. You've got a ton of equity. Your house has been paid off for 20 years and great way to go if that's an option for you. And finally, it pays to be a homeowner. Julie, you and I know that because historically speaking, look, history is very clear cut. If we look at long-term history in the past 100 years, right? investing, real estate has made more people wealthy than any other yes. asset class. And because of the People that owns a home for a long, very for a very long time, mm -hmm. we have a record high equity homeowners position. Mm -hmm. See the see the, see the trend. The only downward trend was back in two thousand eight to two thousand eleven. That's the housing crash. Uh, right. A lot of homes were. Uh, other than that, uh, right. they tracked this this chart from back in the nineteen sixties until now. Right. Time, yeah, almost seventy years of tracking. If you hold your house long term, yes. you will create tremendous mm -hmm. amount of tremendous amount of equity. So it pays to be a homeowner, mm -hmm. pay to be a real estate investor when you buy more rental properties as well. 
that's how you build equity. That's how you build wealth. That's how you build generational wealth. Okay. So in conclusion, my, my takeaway from this is regardless of all the negative headlines out there, don't, don't fall into it because like, this low inventory is not going to go away anytime soon. Mm-hmm. It's not that. Right. It's not that simple to un- unlock supply of the lack of inventories because of the lacking effect, because of the uh, historical low rate that people were able to refinance a couple of years ago and right. what have you. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So we can, I, I feel we can have a shortage of homes, not only for the first few years, uh, right. not this year, uh, mm-hmm. but I feel we, we can have a decade long shortage of homes uh, mm-hmm. within this decade. So. Right. It, to me, it'll be a seller's market. It really is. Yeah, yeah it really is. I think the uh, that last chart t- that you showed was so impactful because I think that chart went all the way back to like, the 1950s mm-hmm. and you only saw one dip. Then again, in my mind, the only reason to worry about a housing crash was everybody's worried about is if you're planning to sell. Because it doesn't matter if you're keeping the house. It doesn't matter if it goes up, down or sideways. And that's that would be true. I know that can be a, a reason why a lot of people are, are hesitant to invest, but it doesn't matter. If you're looking at it for the long term, obvious but from the historical numbers, it's going to go up over time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you just too many. We talked about it on a previous video, you and I, mm-hmm. and we will continue to talk about it, about the uh, successful, successful people. They continue to buy real estate regardless of economic conditions, right. but you have to do it right. But at the end of the day, again, my, my, my takeaway from this video is that uh, absent any kind of a, a unique uh, uh, event, I, I don't right. think that we, can, we are even close to anything having a housing crash because if yeah, for a housing, housing crash to happen, unemployment, the unemployment rate need to be like eight to ten percent or more. Right, right. Or where yeah, there's a unforeseen yeah catastrophic event happening in the world, whatever right. World mm-hmm. War Three or the economy going down the toilet, then every, right. you know, but uh, we, we have not seen any kind of data, any kind of trends that indicate the low supply of uh, inventory then change anytime soon. No exactly. Matter what. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, so the housing market is still very robust, still very resilient, uh, even though the Federal Reserve for the past few years tried to uh, try to uh, crash the market, this raising of interest rate, housing, the housing prices right. did not go down, believe it or not, and last year or even this year or even past what, 15 years, housing prices continue to grow up. Um, yes. So that's my takeaway, all right? Mm-hmm. All right, Julie. Anyway. Yeah, now's the time to do it. I think that's, that's the right. point you're trying to make. It's, you know, don't continue to wait. Uh, because like we said, with the shortage of housing, uh, it's great for sellers because they'll put their house on the market and have 15 people bid on it. But it's, it's tough for those that are trying to get in now. So I think, again, we've talked about this earlier. Even working with the turnkey providers like we've talked about gives mm-hmm. you a leg up on that because you're not competing with the GP general population. Exactly. So, yeah, again, in summary, if, you, if anybody out there received any kind of value from this video, please can subscribe to my YouTube channel. And finally, if you have not already done so, please subscribe your email into our database on the website below on this link. So you become a yeah, new member of a free member of our real estate organization, the University Network. So you can receive weekly free real estate investment newsletter into your inbox so you can learn more about real estate investing so you can achieve your financial goals for yourself. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day. See you on the next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.